Hey everyone, thank you so much for checking this out. My name is Christine Maji, and I am so excited to bring you this video. This is a topic that I've been hearing more and more about. As we've seen over the last decade or so, design is really, really powerful. And that power can be used for good or for not so good. And so as we're here working as designers, we do have a lot of responsibility to be ethical in everything that we put out into the world. So I wanna go over some ways for us to start thinking about this and also what not to do. So here we go. So maybe a good way to start is to think about some designs that are not so ethical. Think about the kind of never-ending social media feeds that kind of take advantage of the way our minds can be easily addicted. Things like making a user feel bad for not signing up for a newsletter. I've definitely seen that before. And not to mention all of the products out there today that just collect so much of our personal and private data that there's security, privacy concerns galore. As designers, we need to be part of the solution and not the problem. Being an ethical designer means you make design decisions based on human well-being over business profit or other nefarious means. And I think most people would say that they're not intentionally going out and doing these nefarious things, right? At least I hope not. Do we actually ever stop and think about the ramifications of the things that we're building and putting out into the world? We need to be doing this regularly and that is my challenge to you and to myself. Okay, so don't be an evil designer, got it. <laughs> but how do I actually be an ethical designer. I'm going to go over a few ways you can do this. The first way you can be an ethical designer is to actively avoid using so-called dark patterns in the user experience. So these are things that purposely hide or make it difficult for a user to do something they want because it's not necessarily good for the business. So things like closing an account. On the flip side, there are other dark patterns that do things that the user did not intend to do that would impact the business in a really sneaky way. So things like adding things to a shopping cart for you and hoping you don't notice them when you check out, or not making the user aware of how their data and privacy may be used against them. Another way to be an ethical designer is to avoid designs that intentionally sort of take advantage of our human lizard brains. Humans are interesting creatures, our brains work in weird ways, and even though we're all different, we all kind of have a shared psychology as to what things uh, get us addicted to things, what things hook us in, and certain design patterns can take advantage of those ways. And it's kind of a fine line between helping the user do something they may want to do, but also helping the user do something maybe they should consider not doing. So an example I have is you know, Netflix. You finished a show, and you really don't need to be up for hours and hours binging the rest of the show, but it just keeps automatically playing after you finish an episode. So it kind of sucks you in and keeps you on the couch for hours and hours, wasting precious time. So while this is great for Netflix's business, you're using their service for longer, and you may think it's good for the user because they may not want to have to select the next episode and hit that button on the remote. It actually kind of perpetuates an unhealthy behavior and it's not really something the user can easily opt out of. But being an ethical designer in this case would kind of stop and think, what are the ramifications of this feature? And that kind of brings me to my next one. You have to think about the implications of your product. You may have great intentions. You may think this is gonna really help somebody and it probably will in certain ways. But you also kind of have to think with your dark hat on of how could someone take this product and really do something crazy with it. What is the worst thing someone could do? Or if this thing blows up, goes viral, gets millions and millions of users, what are the sort of things that could happen that we would maybe want to avoid if we had control? An example I want to bring up here is Airbnb. It started out as a really great service to allow someone to stay in a home in another place, therefore learning from their culture and having great conversations and building that kind of community while you're traveling, which is great. I absolutely love Airbnb. I use it all the time. However, I don't know that they expected it to take off how it has, and I don't know if they expected it to totally disrupt uh, housing markets and drive up rent for the locals that live in these hot markets for Airbnb. So 
that's kind of the dark side of this great service that they probably didn't think about when they were designing it. And now there's laws being put in place and there's all kinds of ways people try to get around these laws and it just kind of becomes a mess. When if they had stopped to think about what if this explodes, what if this takes over the world like it has, what could the potential ramifications be and how can we mitigate some of those not so great things about our product um, and kind of building that into the service could have avoided some of these things. The next way you can be an ethical designer is to be transparent about what you do with your users' data and information. And this is going to be a huge, huge part of the tech industry going forward because we see the cost and the damage that these data breaches can have. So as a designer, uh, if you're asking a user for their information, it helps to let them know why you need that information, what you're going to do with it, how it will help make a better experience for them, but also make sure that they know that you're not going to be selling it to a third party or using it in any kind of weird way. I'd also like to note that if it's in your control, only take the data that's absolutely necessary and don't just go out of your way to help yourself to everything else just because you can. I promise you, users will appreciate it. And lastly, I want you to always make sure that your design is inclusive and accessible to everyone. So if you're making something for the web, making sure you're following WCAG guidelines just for like basic usability for people that may not have full eyesight capability or might have physical impairments that don't allow them to use a mouse or a keyboard. We're starting to see so many resources around accessibility these days, which is great. It's becoming a huge topic and it really should be just a, our default design process that whatever we design is going to be accessible. And when I talk about being inclusive, you need to be considering a wide range of people who are gonna come into contact with your product. It also means not excluding people based on the language that you're using, the terms you're using or even the type of photos and representation you have in your product. I know as UX designers we can get kind of pigeonholed into these personas but those are really just averages and no one's average. Everyone's unique, everyone has a different story, they come from a different background, they're all different and they're going to approach it differently. So the more diverse of people you can research with and test your designs with, you're going to get a more holistic view of actually making something that's inclusive and accessible to everyone. All right, so these are just a few tips that I have for you on being an ethical designer, but like I said, we're starting to see more and more resources come out around this, which are really great. I will link to a few down below uh, for you to check out and share with your team. This should really be baked into our process from day one, so this is not something that I do my normal design process and then at the end I do an ethics check. That's not really gonna work. You have to do it from the very beginning. So let's learn from others' mistakes. <laughs> let's not uh, repeat the dark patterns and, and let's really be ethical about our work. It's really important. All right, go, be ethical. Thanks again for watching. This topic has been on my heart and on my mind for a little while, so glad to be able to share it with you. I would love your feedback. Um, if you have any other resources or any other thoughts, yeah, let me know what you think. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.